<laughs> well, listen, I'm glad you got to go to uh, to New York to uh, to this place. What was the, the name of the place? Remind me again and tell me about your trip. Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. And it was um, it was really good. They they have a state of the art facility, and um, it's amazing. Um, different doctors examined me and checked me out, and um, they did the lab work and sent me for a PET scan. Which the, us going in there, we were told at the doctor's office there that um, instead of it being a stage two, that I'm stage four lymphoma. That's primary in the bone, and I was. Um, we were really upset and, and just kind of distraught a little bit because, I mean, stem cell transplant and um, the radiation, all of that stuff, more treatment, more biopsies were coming up. And then, so he sent me for the PET scan, and he um, it said, you know, it, it, it's anything that he sees, he's going to have to biopsy. Well, he calls me when we're getting on the plane from D.C. to um, go to Tampa to come back home, and... And he said, I don't know how to explain it, Brittany, but it's, um, the PET scan looks great. Your cancer is dying, and it, um, it, it's getting better. And he was shocked. He was stunned. <laughs> and he, he didn't know how to explain that because the MRI that I had two weeks before I went to New York showed that there was cancer, that my tumors had not shrunk, that um, they were filled with cancer, basically. And now they're not. They're getting better. That that is amazing. Um, so you still you still have the tumors, but the the cancer cells you said they're hardly are dying. hardly present. They're dying. Right. Yes. And um, praise God. We we have the he wanted me to finish and continue this last round of chemo, which this one will be my last. And then um, tomorrow afternoon he will call me um, after they present my case with the other doctors and um, come up with a really good plan to whether or not we, we need to do any radiation or we need to do a stem cell transplant. Um, but that was, it, it looks a lot more promising now than what it did before. That is, that is and great. It, you're, you're the mom of five kids. I am. Mom of five, and um, it's been a tough road to sit here. Everybody's like, how do you do it? How do you do it? Well, it's not how you do it. It's that you have to do it, and... I have been blessed. I've read so many people's stories about, and, and, and even on the Pilots for Christ, I've read Bailey's story, and it touched me so much. It's the fact that she's gone through through so much and, and having a, a hard time, and, and I almost feel guilty because I, I know that prayers have helped, and, and they have been the only thing, and God's been the only thing that's gotten us through this. And um, for some reason, I have not been affected as badly by the chemo and and by being sick as much as other people have been. And um, I don't know why I haven't been. I, I don't understand, but um, I've been lucky. And even the doctor, he was like, I don't know why you're not sick. <laughs> he was like, I, I can't explain that because <laughs> you're, you, I have a really aggressive chemo. I'm taking three chemo drugs. And then another drug is called Rituxan, but it's um, a... It's not a chemo drug per se. It targets the actual cancer cells and not all of your cells. So, and they're they're really pretty bad on the body and um and harsh. And then you last the shot, which makes your body feel like you've been hit by a truck over and over. But um, I don't I don't know why. And and that's the same thing with the doctor when he said I can't explain why your your PET scan looks so good and your MRI didn't. And I said, well. It's God. That's the only way you can explain it. It was God, and um, that's the, that's what I'm looking at, and, and that's that's how I can explain to people that I've done as well as I have. Is it's God, and and my little boy told me that not to worry about my cancer. That Jesus had me in His hands, and so, um, and and if He made that promise to my little boy, He's not going to break it. So. I feel pretty good. <laughs> that is just great, Brittany. We appreciate you sharing the news with us and all, and, and we're just you. so excited for you. I know, I know, Jeff's real excited too, and all you. He kids. is. <laughs> they, they kept saying they're like, "So your kids is gone," and I was like, "It's going away," and they were they were just excited because they're they're ready for this part to be over and their mama to be back to normal and not so tired. But um, we're we're and we are thrilled and thankful that. Pops for Christ is actually able to help us and, and get us to New York and get us to the best place that we could go. I mean, they are number one for a reason in, in the country, and um, they were amazing. And we couldn't have done that without y'all's help. I mean, there was no way we would have been able to do that without the, 
you know, y'all helping and being so gracious. Well, Brittany, we, so, we, we love y'all's family. We love you. Anything we can do, we you. want to help. And I know there's a bunch of people out there that are going to enjoy hearing this story. What, what a great well, if I can, thank you. If, if I, and I want to be able to help people going through this as well. So um, hopefully, and, and everything happens for a reason, and I feel that, you know, God doesn't give you anything that you can't handle. So um, maybe in, in the future I will be able to give back and to help so many people who's helped us and um, and help other cancer patients that's going through it. And, and even if it's just a, an ear to listen to, it's so it's easier to talk to somebody who's actually been through it and, and knows how you're feeling. And, um, and I've been there, and, and it, it just stinks sometimes. It really does. But um, to be able to actually talk to somebody who has gone through it, it it's more comforting. For some reason, it's just for somebody to say, I know exactly where you're coming from, and they can cry with you. It, it feels good. <laughs> and um, for them to help you through it, and I want to do that for other people. You told me that, I mean, you've already been doing it. You've been sharing about this. You told me about being on the airplane when you were leaving and running into all these different people. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm a talker. <laughs> My husband and I are opposites. Um, he's more of the reserved and shy, and I'm, I'm very outgoing, and, and I, I can make friends with a stranger in a heartbeat. And um, I there was a cancer survivor that was a seven-year prostate cancer survivor, and he was in first class, but we were chit-chatting before boarding the plane, and, and um, he had introduced his, his name was Dave, and um, I introduced myself, and um, he said that he would never have guessed that I had cancer, and um, that my smile probably lights up any room that I go in, and that he was going to be praying for me, and um, I met other people that um, were actually at Sloan Kettering in New York um, while I was staying in New York, and they were... Um, their cancer had reoccurred, but they were in good spirits, and we had talked about it, and um, they were kind of iffy if they wanted to do treatment or not, and that's what they were there for was to discuss that because he had already been through it, and he didn't know that I was um, there for that reason at the time until afterwards, and I took my hat off, and I was like, why don't you want to go through it? I said, just because you're going to be bald because he, he was worried about the losing his hair again, and I said, you know, it's okay. And, um, you know, your hair will grow back, your, you know, your tiredness will go away, and, um, but your life will always, you know, be number one. And so um, he went ahead and told his doctor that he was going to go on through treatment. And so um, I always say that I don't ever want to do this again, but if it came to the point where I had to, you do what you have to do to be with your family and to stick around because... You know, five kids and a husband they, and a dog. <laughs> they they all need me, and I need them. And um, you know, it's important. Family's important, and um, we've been we've been blessed though. We've been blessed. 